We were searching for common ground and found a place to start through the windows of the heart. In addition to the lessons learned from the TJ Ball at the 1993 General Assembly in Charlotte, it became painfully clear to me that racism exists among Unitarian Universalists. I saw it in the disapproving eyes of people with white skin who could no longer deny or avoid the presence of people of color among us. I heard racism in the angry voices of people with white skin who were upset that their otherwise pleasant General Assembly had been interrupted with protests and criticism against one of their esteemed and beloved forefathers. In stark contrast to that reality, I learned three lessons. First, we need to live our Unitarian Universalist values. Second, we need to listen deeply with open minds and open hearts. Third, we need to be in right relationship with each other. In that circle of 13, I learned that we need to be grounded in our Unitarian Universalist values, which means living by the principles of our faith. In that circle, we acknowledge that the core Unitarian Universalist values are central to who we are. And we agreed that in our faith tradition, which is based on acceptance of each other, freedom, equality, compassion, and the democratic process, when someone is hurt, they have to be able to say, ouch. We also agreed that because individual conscience is at the heart of our faith, it is essential that everyone wrestle with the issues before making decisions about what events to attend or not attend. In that circle of 13, I learned that listening deeply with open minds and open hearts is essential if we want to understand each other and find common ground. Imagine standing in a circle with about a dozen people, taking turns speaking from your heart and sharing your deepest thoughts and feelings. That is perhaps easier to do when all is well, but with a potentially divisive conflict and confusion, it is quite challenging. In our group of 13, we listened deeply to each other, to the raw emotions, the pain, the rage, the confusion, and the grief we all felt. It was personal and it was intimate. Listening with open heart and open mind, I began to understand what black, that black rage, the anger that black people and people of color carry with them is justified because they live with racism, both overt and covert, every single day of their lives. In that circle of 13, I learned about the importance of being in right relationship. Being in right relationship does not mean being right in relationships but that we are fully present with others. 
compassion and respect at the center. It also means we are honest and authentic and risk being vulnerable. That we work through problems and challenges to find our way through to the other side. At the very end of the 1993 General Assembly, after most everyone had left, I was doing a bit of cleanup, bringing back district materials from the convention hall to my hotel room. It was several boxes worth of stuff. Not terribly heavy, but bulky. That is when Hope Johnson and I crossed paths again. She didn't see my face. Only this person carrying a mass of boxes coming toward her. She asked if she could help. Later, she told me that she was a bit taken aback when she recognized me because she didn't know how I would respond to her. Well, I accepted her offer, gave her some boxes to carry and off we went. When we got to my hotel room, Hope was expecting me to just thank her and send her on her way. But I invited her in to my room. After we put down the boxes, we talked for hours. We shared our stories and we listened with open hearts and open minds. And we began to realize how much we had in common, both women about the same age, both single mothers, one daughter each. And as we talked, we began to understand why we ended up, we, why we ended up being in the roles we were in. Hope reading the letter of protest and I being the first to address the delegates with our report. Neither Hope nor I had the emotional baggage of growing up with the cultural legacy of slavery and Jim Crow laws or living with American racism. We were both foreigners, Hope from Jamaica and I from Sweden. Not only that, at the 1993 General Assembly, both Hope and I felt the call to ministry. Our one-on-one -on -one time together was such a blessed gift. We were not on opposite sides of a racial conflict anymore. We had found common ground through the windows of the heart. Today, we have the responsibility to dismantle racism which we can do only in as far as we are willing to examine and better, better understand institutional and systemic racism on the one hand and white supremacy and white privilege on the other. This we can do, I think, 
if we strive to be in right relationship with each other, if we listen deeply with open minds and open hearts and commit to live according to our shared Unitarian Universalist values. May it be so.